On the Foreign Fork menu today, we're making Danish meatballs, also called frikadeller, in a cream-based sage sauce. They are delicious. Keep on watching this video and I'm gonna show you how to make them right now. What's up everyone? My name's Alexandria and this is the Foreign Fork where we are cooking one meal from every country in the world and today we're doing a Danish recipe called frikadeller. They're Danish meatballs and I have them in a sage cream sauce and they are delightful. So let's get right into it. The first thing that you're gonna need is a half pound of ground beef and a half pound of ground pork. You're also gonna need a quarter cup of breadcrumbs. My mom used to make her own breadcrumbs by using up old stale bread, which sometimes is a good option, but in this recipe I recommend the store-bought kind. I also have one third of an onion that I grated. So I just took the cheese grater, used the big side of the cheese grater and grated the onion on it until I got one third cup of a grated onion. If you don't have a cheese grater and you can't grate your onion, that's totally fine. Just make sure that you mince the onions really, really small so that you don't get big chunks of onions in your small meatballs. It'll ruin the texture. You're also gonna need two tablespoons of milk. I use 2%, use whatever you want. One egg, about a half teaspoon of salt. I do to taste, so I, I think this is about a half a teaspoon or so. And a half teaspoon of nutmeg. I don't know, maybe a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves because we're gonna get a little messy. Combine this mixture with our hands. If you are uncomfortable with that, you can use a wooden spoon, but it's just quickest and easiest if you're comfortable using your hands. Once everything is combined in this bowl, you're gonna use your hands to form a well in the middle of the meat. Then we're gonna add two tablespoons of seltzer water into the well in the middle of the meat, and then use our hands to combine them again. All right, meatball mixture is ready, so now it's time to form it into meatballs. So I'm just gonna form them into balls like this and put them on the baking tray. I got a little overzealous in my flattening of the last couple of meatballs, just like flatten it a little bit, not like a patty, but just enough so it's like kind of rounded but flat on top and bottom. All right, next thing we're gonna do is get a heavy bottomed pan. We're gonna turn it to a medium high heat and then we're gonna add about two tablespoons of butter in here and allow that to melt. All right, all of our butter is melted into this pan. You can see it's starting to bubble a little bit, but not smoking. You don't want it to be burnt, but bubbling is okay. And then we're gonna add our meatballs into the pan here. We're gonna make sure that we cook them on one side until they're brown and then we're gonna flip them over and cook them on the other side. If you go to flip your meatballs and they're kind of stuck to the bottom of the pan, you can't pick them up very easily, it means that they're still cooking on that side. Once they're completely cooked through, they'll release really easily from the bottom of the pan. But if you have to kind of like tear it off the bottom, it means it's not ready to flip, so don't touch it yet. In between checking on your meatballs, you can cover them with a lid so that all the heat stays in the pan. So as your meatballs finish cooking, you can start to remove those to either a, a plate on the side or a cookie sheet, whatever works for you. And once all of the meatballs are cooked and the pan is empty, we're gonna start making the sauce. So you have all of this delicious like beef drippings that are in here. Don't wash your pan, don't remove those. Those are gonna give some really good flavor to the sauce. So we're just gonna make our sauce right in this pan with all of those leftover drippings in here. In order to make the sauce, you're gonna add another tablespoon of butter into the pan and allow that to melt. And you can kind of turn your pan to a medium low heat. And we're gonna make a roux based sauce, but don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. And into that melted butter, we're gonna add two tablespoons of flour and mix it in until a paste forms. You may recall that we used this method on our stovetop version for creamy mac and cheese. Once your paste forms, you're gonna add one cup of cream and kind of mix it all together until the flour dissolves in. If you like a lot of sauce, if you want each meatball to be drenched in sauce, you can also double this. As the flour is dissolving into the cream, you're also gonna add some beef bouillon. So I have a teaspoon of jarred beef bouillon. Um, if you're using the beef bouillon cubes, you're gonna need one cube. And mix that all together, and then we're gonna leave this to thicken a little bit over medium low heat. So we can see it's starting to get a little bit thicker, but not totally the right thickness yet. So I'm gonna add in my sage leaves. I have five or six sage leaves. It's easy to get the flavor in there with full leaves, and then if you don't chop them, it's easier to just pull out those five individual leaves. Our sauce is nice and thick, which means I'm gonna add the meatballs back into the pan. So I'm just gonna kinda like spread this sauce around. Once the sauce is done, I'm just gonna put all the meatballs back into the sauce and I'm gonna put the lid on, keep it on low heat for two to three minutes just to make sure everything warms up really nicely and then they're gonna be ready to serve. 
That's it, folks. Easy, delicious Danish meatballs. IKEA has nothing on these bad boys. If you want the full written instructions for this recipe, you can find them at the link in the description of this video. Don't forget to check out all the other videos on my channel. We have delicious food from all around the world where you can put some culture in your kitchen. And also don't forget to check out the video that we have that's linked right here. There's a awesome interview with a Danish food blogger that teaches us all about food and culture in Denmark that I really think you're gonna love. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.